it? All right, if everyone could take their seats, we'd like to get started again, so you don't have to spend the entire evening here, so. Thank you. So why I couldn't do that is beyond me. You're silent. Okay. Now, one thing that's happened since you all went to have coffee, somebody said that, that the politicians are not being mean with each other. <laughs> You're all being polite and kind. Pardon? Pardon? You're a born mean? Well, I've seen only kindness. Go figure. Okay, so try, let's try to just um, find someone you dislike and just... <laughs> okay, we want to, a little bit more debate. And I understand how you're very in tune with a lot of each other's opinions and, and stands. But if you can find something that you particularly are firm about and you think you, it makes a difference to your election, and your position on the council, please focus on that too. Okay, our next question goes to um, Mayor Davis with a response by Council Member Shively. What are your plans to take advantage of the World Cup races if you're elected? There are a number of people in our city that have been talking um, to people in San Francisco about uh, finding a way to bring some of those people here in Vallejo, um, the World Cup um, participants. Uh, we have Mare Island and we have um, uh, the waterfront. We have a lot of opportunities to get them to bring their boats here. And also, we have the ferry, which means that people can come over here uh, and go back. Um, I haven't been actively involved in um, that aspect of it. Someone in staff has. Um, I'm not that familiar with all the things that go with the cup, um, but staff has been looking at it. That's all I can really tell you. Okay. Well, for a number of years, I have been badgering the Convention and Visitors Bureau to promote package deals where people could come over to Vallejo on the ferry, stay overnight, visit our restaurants, visit Marine World, visit the, the downtown historic homes, visit Mare Island, visit St. Peter's Chapel. All of this could be rolled into one package like hotels do in other places. It's not that hard. So I'd like to see that happen for the World Cup races. There's absolutely no reason why we can't create a package with people who fly into San Francisco or Oakland and offer them this opportunity. They can come over on the ferry. There are a number of attractions in Vallejo that we all hide very, very well. We need to make that much more public, and I think the Vallejo Convention and Visitor Center should be taking the lead in this. Thank you. I'm, I'm just going to take off on the ferry as opposed to the World Cup specifically, but the, the ferry, we have been working on marketing the ferry so that we um, work with the city of San Francisco and the waterfront in San Francisco as well as Vallejo for package deals um, through the um, Water Emergency Transportation Agency, WIDA, uh, of which we have uh, former mayor intensely sitting on. We have been looking at how we can market the, the, uh, the ferry and marketing so that businesses in San Francisco offer two for one dinners and things of that nature in, in terms of using our ferry. Thank you, thank you. The next question is for Reverend Asamimi uh, with a response by Mr. McConnell. How would you regulate the medical marijuana dispensaries in Vallejo? And do you think they need to be regulated? Thank you, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> we don't need to regulate medical marijuana in Vallejo. One, it's illegal to, for medical marijuana to be in Vallejo. They have license 
but they are not authorized to sell medical marijuana in Vallejo. One, what are the effects of marijuana to every family? What are the effects of marijuana to every individual? That's what we should look first of all before saying about regulating marijuana because the effect of marijuana is more than let's say you task them, we do this, we don't need to regulate marijuana. We need to eradicate marijuana. The, the effect of increasing crime is being caused by a lot of marijuana. Even it increases highness to cancer. And when you are taking more marijuana, you take it for the first time, you've been tired to take it for the second time. The effect is of marijuana is more dangerous than the advantage. That means we don't need to regulate. We need to make sure, even though the marijuana passes, it should be through dispensary or pharmacy only, through any hospital, not individual, thank you, not every individual selling marijuana in their homes is totally wrong. You can sell marijuana in your home where increase, there's a lot of disadvantage, we should know that. No talk of even regulating. Thank, thank you. you. First off, we're talking about medical marijuana. I am in favor of Major C, and I also in favor of medical marijuana. I saw Viet Cong medics give it to wounded personnel in the field, and it does kill pain. It also helps people with cancer problems. The real challenge is to properly regulate it, which means very controlled activities as to places where they can be, the number of units, and how they operate, which isn't being done now. There's going to be a staff report out that you can read on the internet already about medical marijuana on Tuesday night's council session, and it does not recommend a moratorium. I am in favor of a moratorium, and I think because it will send a message. Right now, they're claiming that it's in violation of our zoning laws. Hey, it's been in violation of our zoning laws ever since it happened, and the city council and the city staff haven't done a darn thing about it for two years. It's about time they got off their buff and do something about it. So when we sit down to actually regulate it, we have to look at the Proposition 19, which I've read and have here. We have to look at what's happening in the city of San Jose, which has already gone down that road. And we have to learn from their experiences. But regulate it, yes, very stringently, absolutely. Thank you. OK. The next question. 30 seconds. You don't oh, I'm terribly one? sorry. OK. Yes. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. 30 seconds. Um, I think. It's not good for you to regulate medical marijuana. I already said, it increased heart rate. We should know that. If there's a medical doctor here and he said marijuana is good, let him stand up and let me know. Those people, I know of a lady who, has, who said medical, he has a medical marijuana certificate. What does it happen? After something happened to this lady, he said, Pastor, if God can save my child, I will stop medical marijuana. Thank this you. This woman stop. Thank you, Pastor. The next question is for Council Member Hannigan with a response from Mr. Malgapo. Do you see a benefit of reorganization of public safety services in Vallejo? Or should Vallejo maintain separate police and fire departments? OK. Can I just correct one thing? You called it the World's Cup. It's actually America's Cup. Okay. Oh, you're For absolutely all you sailors right. in the house. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reorganization of the police department. It's not the role of a city council member to reorganize um, really any department in the city of Vallejo. That is held by our CEO, and that would be the uh, city manager. But what we can do is ask through policy, um, through community outcry, uh, what type of policing we want, and where we want it, and how we want it. And I think that's an important distinction. I'm not here to say I'm going to reorganize the police department. Frankly, I happen to think that the police department has been functioning pretty well with the reductions in services in, in resources that they've had to put up with in, and still battling a similar amount of crime over the last four years. We've reduced our police services by over 42 percent. 
over the last four years. That's incredible. But yet we're still catching the bad guys. Now, as our police department grows, I'd like to see the f further use of technology. We currently have surveillance cameras that has been extremely helpful in a lot of areas as far as combating prostitution and drug deals. And I'd like to see that, that uh, we put up more surveillance cameras throughout the community and grow our police department with technology. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know that we need to reorganize. Uh, what I do know is this, they've been cut 40 plus percent, the number is 95 down from I think it was 130, and the service we're getting now is substandard. If you get a call to Vallejo PD, depending on what it is, they may or may not respond. Uh, the, again, that number is 95, fire is at 72, uh, that's going to grow when we hire the nine firefighters that uh, uh, will come online after we identify the recruits, or I'm sorry, the potential applicants, and accept them into the roles, you'll have nine more firefighters, and we'll be able to reopen an additional fire station. Uh, but creative policing, you can only do that so much with technology, new cruisers, video cams. Uh, uh, the number is way too low, folks, and uh, I said this in another forum, let's get real. Aren't we all checking our windows and doors a little bit closer before we go to bed at night? We have a problem. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to say in the last four years, we've already been reorganizing our police and our fire departments as they've shrunk, and I think that's an important distinction. What I'd like to see happen, and that is the consolidation of uh, services as it relates to dispatch and as it relates to working with other communities and consolidating fire service and, and police dispatch with both the, the uh, county as well as with our other communities, much like we've done with the consolidation of the buses with Benicia. Thank you. The next question is for Mr. Logan, with a response from Mr. Sampayan. Do you agree with some community groups and business owners that the city needs to begin enforcing its vacant building zoning ordinances and find property owners who are not leasing their commercial buildings? How do you see enforcing or not enforcing these ordinances a benefit to Vallejo? Yeah. I don't, yeah, we would have to really look at that. I, I'm not familiar with what the ordinance exactly said, what it exactly says, but um, I, I think the market is at a place right now where, I mean, we're seeing vacant buildings all throughout our city and other cities as well. Uh, so to start finding a property owner for having a vacant building, I'm not sure is the right approach. I do think that the property owner, as a property owner, must maintain their building in a, in a uh, a sufficient way and I think the probably the most powerful man in our city um, right now the mayor is powerful and I think the city manager is powerful but uh, the building inspector is probably the most powerful person especially when we look at downtown if we can get our building inspector going into some of these problem properties finding a, a socket that's hanging off the wall incorrectly and start finding them for things like that or look for a wall that's leaning uh, that's the way we start to get property owners to take care of their, their property. We start hitting them in the pocketbooks. Uh, they're looking at the bottom line. Many of them don't live in the city of Vallejo. Uh, and so we have to be sure that we're being smart about however, however we, we choose to make sure that, you know, downtown looks a certain way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, we need to do something about these abandoned and foreclosed properties that we have throughout our community. They are a blight on our town. What has happened with open buildings, abandoned properties, empty and derelict buildings? They've become a blight on our society. They become the clubhouses for kids to play in. They have become places for squatters to move into. In my job at Fighting Back Partnership, I receive probably 10 calls a week from residents from this community that say, hey, there's this abandoned house across the street from me and these squatters have moved in. They're stealing electricity from me. They're stealing my water. They take the gas out of my car. They sell drugs. There's prostitution running in and out of the place. What are we going to do about it? We need to enforce that. We need to tighten up 
on these laws and use the resources we have available to take care of this problem. We need to board up these homes. We need to follow what laws we have that say when they're boarded up by code enforcement that they're painted appropriately and that they look appropriate for this community. Thank you. Someone's gonna hate us because I happen to agree. Um, and it's, it's, it's probably because we're all related. It's Logan for Vallejo, Hannigan for Vallejo, Sam Payan for Vallejo. So we, we happen to get along, but I, I think that's so true. If, if there is a, a, an abandoned building, we need to make sure that it is boarded up so kids aren't playing in it, uh, prostitution isn't happening, crime isn't occurring. I think that makes sense, absolute sense. So I'm in agreement. Sorry, whoever made that comment to me. <laughs> Does anyone on the panel disagree that once five minutes? I disagree. Not five minutes, 30 seconds, Mr. McConnell? The ability to force landlords to rent or lease their building is probably unconstitutional on its face. What are we, we going to do? Find them when they don't repair their socket? How's that for business friendly? We can consolidate planning building police fire into one code enforcement in fact, basis and make it complaint driven as well as office driven. Because when I called in as planning commissioner, I got results. When my wife called in, she didn't. So start flooding code enforcement with complaints if you want to see them act, but make sure you document it. Let's get them off their duffs. Nobody answered the question directly. Uh, yeah, find them. Okay, specifically the ones who are warehousing property downtown, and I think that's mainly where the, the question was directed, and that, that's what this is all about. And if I'm wrong, then someone correct me. Um, downtown, there are plenty of turnkey ready places that people can rent and be in operation very, very quickly if people would just put out a for rent sign and let people know they're available. And for not doing that and sitting on your property waiting for Marijuana Club to come along and open there instead is criminal in my opinion. Thank you. Okay, no, we'll, I'll give you more time. Anyone that wants to be contentious will get in a, a little five more minutes. <laughs> 30 seconds, no. We'll go on to the next question, but um, <laughs> okay, the next question is for Councilmember Shively with a response from Mayor Davis. In the absence of an updated general plan, which hasn't been updated for the last 20 years or over the last 20 years, how do you plan on approaching continuity with development that lasts longer than your council term? Well, portions of the general plan have been updated. In fact, the housing element was updated as recently as last year. So uh, the entire plan is not obsolete. However, it is old and it's not something that really serves the city well. What I have advocated for for a number of years is something a little more specific than a general plan, and that is a master plan. How do we want our whole city to look in 10 years or five years, not just parts of it. What do we want for a whole cohesive city? If we have a million dollars and anyone wins the lotto and wants to donate it, I'm sure it would be great. That's what it's gonna cost to update our general plan. Is there anyone here that would like to take a million dollars for that as opposed to getting the streets fixed? I think that's unlikely. So it does need to be updated. I don't see the money on the immediate horizon, but if, um, if we can concentrate on something better than a general plan, a master plan, I think it would serve the city better. Now, if there's any place where we can get the money, I'm gonna go back to what I said before. That is fixing our contracts. Almost everything that you have heard up here today financially goes back to that one topic, that we have contracts we can't afford. Reducing Thank them will get the money we need. Thank you. Um, there are a number of things that we need in, to, to do our um, general plan update, and we don't have the money for all of it. So there are some things we can do without it. I have been uh, actually, in the past uh, six to eight months, I've been talking to council member um, Brown about some ways in which we could, and she has some ideas and she's a planning person, 
but we've been talking about ways in which we can start doing some work that we do have money for right now in terms of getting ready for fixing our general plan when we do have more money. We've also looked at ways of asking colleges who have um, um, graduate departments to see if we can in fact work with them on certain elements of our general plan that wouldn't cost us money. Uh, my feeling is you always have to look for other ways to do things. You don't just sit back and say, I don't have the money, so I don't do it. Try to find a way to bootstrap it if you have to, but let's get something done. Thank you. Well, the idea of using interns from colleges is great, and I would certainly support that. Uh, but saying that you can do something without money is like asking people to do a task for free. And if they want to, that's fine. And if they don't, they'll tell you so. Once again, I'm going to continue to advocate for something more definitive than a general plan. And as I said, that's a master plan for the entire city as one cohesive, comprehensive unit. Thank you. Next question is for Mr. Kershan with a response from Ms. Council Member Hannigan. Mr. Kershan. What should be done with the fairground property? Keep it as it is, build more recreational based activities, or build retail commercial residential project? Okay, no residential. And it should be definitely changed though, in a way that respects and preserves the fair theme. I don't know about the Solano 360 version, though, because the city's getting, uh, well, where I come from, it's called Drek in return. Look that up in the Yiddish English Dictionary if you don't know what it means. But uh, anyway, uh, I think the city needs a larger share of, of any tax or revenue. I think the county's acting like they're doing us a favor to be involved in this process. I'm not for any big box retailer there. I mean, perhaps a, a sports complex or a convention center and, and complement with some smaller retail businesses, but nothing that's gonna make a ghost town out of the shopping center on the other side of 80, directly across. It's uh, going a little too fast. I don't think they're hearing the community enough, and uh, I don't think Vallejo's got enough of a say in this here, and they should have much more say. Thank you. The reality of the fairgrounds property is we've been talking as a city and as a county of redevelop redeveloping it for decades. And it truly is probably going to take at least another decade before any dirt is turned. Um, I am in support of the process so far in uh, the concepts of what that property becomes. And you have to know there are some restrictions on that property. There's a triangular piece called that was owned by the Handlery family. And if we don't maintain that as a fair, a, some semblance of a fair, uh, we actually, that property will turn back over to the Handleries for ownership. And then we've lost that, that that triangle. So it's important that we maintain that fair aspect. Um, today I'm in support of the, the direction which is looking at entertainment uh, resources. I've always thought that it was a great location for a concert or for a convention type center. It's very central in the Bay Area. You've got a lot of space there to build large facilities and hotels and Thank restaurants. You. you have 30 seconds, sir. Just to repeat what I said, I think that Vallejo needs to have a lot more input. It needs to be a family-oriented theme, not a theme that's centralized on a big box store there to gain revenue. It's got to be something that perpetuates itself, that complements Marine World. Uh, there's been talk of a Lego land or another type of amusement venue. That, that, that would be more appropriate, in my opinion. Thank you. The next question from, comes from our audience, and I will give anybody 15 seconds to rebut after the, um, the two that are selected. So pay attention, everybody. If you, only if you disagree. Okay, so 
The question is, do you favor, and the question goes to uh, Mr. Mal Malgapo with a response from Mr. Logan. Do you favor sitting, uh, setting Vallejo pay and benefits based on the public sector? I'll repeat it again. Do you favor setting Vallejo pay and benefits based on the public sector? Uh, again, that's, that's an issue that uh, cannot be decided by any one member of the council. Uh, it needs to be looked at by staff, it needs to be reviewed, and it's hard to give a definitive answer based on hypothetical uh, situation. And so at, at this moment, I, my answer will be no. Our, our salaries, again, they, they should be in line with what we are able to pay. And unless we do that, then we're not running the city like a business. Um, connecting it to the private sector, maybe, maybe not. If the private sector is doing extremely well and everyone's making $250,000 a year, we may not be able to afford that as a city. Uh, so just to say, yeah, that's a good idea. If we look at the other stream, extreme, you know, it, it's not. So I would, I would say we have to just bring whatever our costs are in line with whatever, whatever revenues we actually bring in as a city. Thank you. Um, 30 seconds for Mr. Malgapo. Again, when you're, uh, when you're talking salaries and, and pensions, uh, uh, this isn't something that you would take lightly. I think there's a procedure in place. Uh, in fact, I think it's in June of next year when this contract will actually come to the table to be uh, reviewed and acted upon by the city council. Uh, so it, it's difficult to, uh, that's a, a fair question, but it's really difficult to uh, make a definitive response without looking at numbers. Thank you. Does anyone disagree? Yeah, I do. Thank I, you. I, think, I think one of the things we can take a look at is linking our salaries more to our tax bases rather than prevailing wages in our nine jurisdictions which are all higher than we are. And during, during the break, uh, our knowledgeable gentleman and I came up and suggested we tie it to the federal government GS standards adapted Thank to you. local standards. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Shively. Thank you. I just want to make sure you did say uh, linking them to the public sector? Yes, to the public sector. Okay, thank you. They're linked to the public sector now with comparable cities. That's why we're in the situation we're in. They're not linked to the private sector, which is what they should be linked to, as well as what we can afford. Thank you. So, I'm sorry. So it was, should we link our salaries with other salaries in the public sector or private sector? In the public sector. Public sector. Do so you other favor sitting, setting Vallejo pay and benefits based on the public sector? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought it was private. Yeah. I mean, we have to look at what other cities are doing. That's our competition. That's business 101. You look at what the competition is doing. If we want to attract the best employees here for the city of Vallejo, we have to make sure that we're being competitive with our competitors. Okay. Uh, Reverend actually asked first and. After that, we'll I'd move also on. like to interject too. We'll move on to the next one. It's a, a better question. <laughs> I have a better answer to this question, though. Go ahead. Okay, I disagree because um, we can't link our salary with the public sector because people do different type of job. Because are, we are not doing the, we are we are not doing the same type of job. Because if we link to the same type of salary or the same pension, we have to do the same job. Thank you. Mr. Sampayan, we're going to move on to the next question. And in fact, it's your question, so you'll be pleased. Okay. You're, giving, you're getting more time. Wonderful. Okay. The question to Mr. Sampayan with a response from Reverend Asamimi. Okay. Vallejo is currently in litigation with our downtown developer. Given that, how do you plan to move forward with the downtown redevelopment and when? This litigation is really difficult for our community. If we lose, it is going to cost us a lot of money. 
My hope is that there is going to be a way to structure this in a way that is not going to harm us, that we are going to be able to come out on top, that we have an attorney or a group of attorneys that are going to be able to take this and say, no, Triad, you were wrong. We did not break the contract. You broke the contract by not completing the promises that you had said you were going to do for our community. The biggest thing that I saw that was coming to town was going to be the live work uh, building that was going to be placed there at Virginia and I believe that's Sacramento streets across from uh, the Empress Theater. What a wonderful thing that would have been. But it was so unfortunate that because of the economic downturn that this went away, what has happened is they feel that we have broken the contract, we the city, and that is absolutely false. What we need to do is start thinking ahead and making sure that our legal folks are there to defend us and say no, no. It's you, Triad. It's you that broke our contract. And one thing I need to contribute by adding to it is what he said is, what are the agreements made by both parties? Because that is what substantial we should look into first. Whether they break the law, they don't break the law. What are the agreements made by the party? But we make sure we are the upper side, the city. Thank you. The biggest thing is that they, did they follow the performance clause that was in the contract? It's my understanding that no, they did not follow their performance clause. It's my understanding that they failed dra dramatically. And sadly enough, this is what's happened to our community. And we have lost what would have been an absolutely thriving development in our downtown. I think what we need to do is look at other developments, like I said earlier, develop our our Mare Island, our waterfront, and ultimately will come to our downtown. And it will truly enhance what we want for our community to be. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from our audience. And I'll repeat it twice, just so that I don't make a mistake. How would you support better enforcement of quality of life violations in our neighborhood? How would you support better enforcement of quality of life violations in our neighborhood? The question goes to Mr. Kershan with a response from Mr. Sampayan. Well, I'm probably you're in closer agreement with you than you could even imagine about this, but uh, anyway, it's all good. Um, I think that the police department should assign, in fact, during the break I was speaking to a a voter about this and I agree with them the police department should assign certain officers on the shift to interact with the citizens groups not haphazardly but intentionally and they should have direct contact with them the citizens groups are the eyes and ears of every neighborhood there's a citizens group in they're 300 and growing they're doing a great job and um, the police need to work more closely with them. We need to change Vallejo's image, that we're not gonna tolerate the kind of things people see when they pass through here that make them never wanna come back. They, the loitering, the drugs, the noise that vibrates me out of my house. I mean, I would love to see something similar to a DUI check where they stop people who've got the noise coming out of their car with no music, just causing uh, the equivalent of an earthquake on wheels. You know, I had enough of this. So, uh, but but uh, the core of it is with the citizens groups and the police working closer with them to know exactly what quality of life issues they need to address in each neighborhood. Right? <laughs> Mr. Kershan, I have to agree with you on the majority of that. However, what I want to add to that is this. We do need to merge code enforcement with law enforcement. We need to come together to say what is wrong with our quality of life issues. Some of those are, are things that I spoke about earlier. The abandoned, dilapidated homes that need improvement. We can merge code enforcement and get them out there to take real affirmative action to repair or go after the owners or to follow the codes that we have available to us to pursue uh, repair of structures. The other thing that we need to do is come together as a community, the way we've done so far with our neighborhood watch groups, where people are out being the eyes and ears of the community. We have over 300 neighborhood watch groups with over 3,000 residents involved. 
And I am very happy to say that they are bringing these issues forward to the community, talking to the right people at City Hall to get some of these problems taken care of. And that's where we need to go because code enforcement, law enforcement, the fire department, and all our inspectors can't be everywhere at one time. I can't emphasize enough that we as a community are doing a phenomenal job by coming together and doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. No, sir. Particularly not you. <laughs> no, no. It's actually, I'll tell you what, it's good that you've asked me that question because we're running, Sam has 30 seconds, but we're also running a little bit late. So, Mr. Kershan, could you, could you respond to, you have 30 minutes, 30 seconds to rebut. <laughs> no rebuttal. <laughs> Brilliant. So here's my question. Thank you, Sam. We're actually running a bit late, and I'm, I'm asking if the panel is comfortable staying an extra 15 minutes. I know you all have other obligations, perhaps. Uh, will, yes, sir? Will we have an opportunity for a closing statement? Uh, yes, we'll make sure that you I'll have stay that. I'll stay Yes, okay. Is 15 minutes an extra 15 minutes? It's, yes. yes? Brilliant, okay, let's continue. The next question is number four, uh, Mr. McConnell, with a response from Council Member Hannigan. In the absence of an updated general plan, which hasn't been updated for over 20 years in some parts, um, how do you plan on approaching continuity with development that lasts longer than a council term? We're asking some questions a number of times to get other people to respond to an important topic. The best way to do that is to have a agreed upon policy of a city council and that means addressing it in terms of specific plans as well as master plans and overall philosophy. Another way to do that is to empower the Planning Commission with more authority than they already have. Currently, when a decision is made by the Planning Commission, it's reviewable by the City Council in total. Rather than reinventing the wheel every time, my suggestion is have the Planning Commission become a determinative body, and then if somebody doesn't like it, they have to prove why the Planning Commission is wrong. That means, of course, that the Planning Commission has to be uh, staffed with very qualified people, which means all of us have to step up to the plate and volunteer to be on these commissions. Another way to uh, guarantee continuity is to simply resolve the uh, suit that we have with the different developers we have and get them moving again. Trying to kick try it out is going to be costly, it is costly, and that means we need to think about settlement more closely than we have in the past. And even though council members can't sit in on settlement discussions, they can at least be present and listen, although they're restricted by confidentiality of the courts as well. So to have continuity, we need to have a clear policy by city council, and implemented by the commissions, and resolved before litigation goes to trial, because when you get to trial, you don't know what's going to happen. Can you repeat the question? Yes. In the absence of an updated general plan, which hasn't been updated in some parts for at least 20 years, how do you plan on approaching continuity with development that lasts longer than a council term? I think that's a really good question. I, I think probably <laughs> we all know that most developments uh, last longer than a council term. Uh, particularly from the planning perspective. Since I've been on the council, Solano 360 has changed from a um, office mixed use, including housing uh, development concept to an arts and entertainment district. So, I mean, that's how fast it's changed. And like I said, before we turn any dirt, we're gonna probably see another 10 years go by because it's gonna require some money. So um, when all those come together is when it's extremely important that we are uh, looking at the continuity with, other, with the other plans in the community. We currently have um, a plan on Mare Island. We've got a plan for the downtown, the downtown specific plan. And, um, and the waterfront in Solano 360. Sonoma Boulevard is next, and that's actually a big question that this next council is gonna have, is how do we link Sonoma Boulevard to the rest of our city when it traverses so at least two miles of our town? Thank you. Well, that's all very good and nice, but the reality is the 360 is a county or a development, and all that we can do is ensure that we have a voice and we actually get a fair shake on sales tax. Well, one of the things we <clears throat> really need to do is have continuity <clears throat> by saying no to more housing. 
Currently, Chicago, the Chicago required us to build so many units, and after that, all we have to do is have a housing element, which means, means we have to provide for it. That doesn't mean we have to build it. That simply means that we have to have standards that are going to be difficult to obtain more housing on and instead concentrate on commercial and retail. Thank you. Okay, we get, we get to our last... 15 lesson. seconds, please. Oh, no, no, no. We don't have time. I'm terribly sorry. We really don't have time, but thank you. Our next question is for Mr. Logan, and in response, Reverend um, Asimini, salaries and benefits are currently at 82% of general fund expenses. If elected, you'll be negotiating contracts within the first six months of your term. What percentage of general fund expenses would you like to see after negotiations are complete? Just one quick word about the general plan. Uh, the general plan is really important because when we look at the amount of housing that is uh, given to us by ABAG, they look at things, factors like the general plan and how land is owned in our community. If we can figure out a way to preserve certain parts of our community as open space similar to what they do in Marin or uh, zone it as agricultural, similar to what they do in Napa, the amount of affordable housing that would be dedicated to this area or allocated to this area by ABAC would go down. That's just one factor. As it relates to uh, uh, contracts and the percentage that we would spend or that I would be willing to spend for public safety, I think 82% is consistent with uh, what other cities spend, uh, but I can't just give a, a blanket number, I, I, an arbitrary number. I would say that we have to figure out how we use what we have to raise the level of service to the demand. Thank you. At least all they depend on the budget of the city. That is number one. We should look onto the budget before the developing a plan for the salary plan. Comparing our city with other cities, I don't believe in that. What is our own blueprint? Are we working on that blueprint we have before? Are we going to modernize the blueprint? Instead of looking at other cities for what they are paying or what their uh, salary plan is, let's have the way we develop our own that will fit the city budget. That's what I believe. Again, the, the amount that we, it, we have to run the city like a business. The amount that we can pay employees has to be consistent with the amount that we bring in every single year. That's the only way it's gonna be sustainable. That's the only way it makes sense. Our budget is not just a piece of paper that we just write numbers on. It has to be part of our roadmap. So if part of what we wanna see as a community is public safety, then we have to allocate the necessary funds to do that. And we have to make the cuts when necessary, but they need to be negotiated. And that's what I would stand for. Thank you. We now move on to our lightning round, which is basically 15 seconds. I ask a question, and three of you get to, to answer it. I'll tell you who you are after the person before you finishes. 15 seconds. In 2010, Vallejo removed binding arbitration from the city charter. Was this a good idea, or would you like to see binding arbitration reinstated? Mayor Davis. Excellent idea. I fully support it 100% and worked on it. Uh, Council Member Shively. Was a long needed idea. Should have been removed years ago when the California State Legislature made it impossible for public safety personnel to strike. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Malgapo. It's a good idea, it's already in place, and it puts the city council in a much, much better negotiating position. Okay, 15 seconds for someone who disagrees. I don't think it should ever have been removed. I think it was a, a long, hard fought for collective bargaining right. It was really never used, and uh, you know, just shouldn't have been removed. Thank you, next question. Sorry. Next question. If you are elected, what is the single accomplishment 
you want to achieve before the end of your term. Uh, Mr. Krishan. Uh, is this a 15 second one? Or? Yes. I want to listen to everybody in the community, whether I'm mayor or council person. If a group has issues, I want to hear it. If they're gay and they feel they're not being represented, I want to hear them. I want them to fit in. I want everybody to fit in and have a role. Thank you. Mr. McConnell. Financial stability, more citizens' involvement, the ability to cooperate more amongst staff and council, respect for everyone else. Thank you. Mr. Logan. I want to go for the all-American city distinction again, <laughs> and I think it's doable, uh, but we have to all pull together. So I, I would say I would like to build more collaboration, let our diversity be, uh, be something that brings us together rather than divide us. Uh, and if we can do that, that'll be a great accomplishment for our city. Thank you. The next question. Our current city manager, Phil Bachelor's contract expires soon. So if elected, you will be in a position to hire a new city manager. What do you see as the top three qualifications for Vallejo city manager? Council Member Hannigan. Experience, an ability to communicate with both employees and the council and the community, and a strong eye on fiscal stability. Mr. Saifian. Financial stability, ability to deal with the unions constructively, and more importantly, an open ear to the residents of this community who pay a salary. Reverend Asimimi. One, live within our communities. He has to live in this city, um, so that he'll be able to communicate what is happening in our city to rectify our city. When we live outside, he cannot know what's going on in the city. Be able to communicate, set our budget to the right path. Thank you. Next question, do you support measure C, medical marijuana business license tax? Council Member Shively. Yes, and I co-authored the argument in favor of it. Thank you. Mr. Malgapo. I do support Measure C because it will bring revenue to our city. Mr. McConnell. Yes, because we have to regulate and we have no reason not to make money off of something that the state has already authorized as long as we do it and consistent with federal standards. Thank you. Next question. Do you support some police functions currently being handled by sworn personnel to be handled by non-sworn police officers to reduce costs? Mr. Kirshen. Yes, I do. Administrative tasks, paperwork tasks, uh, summonses for parking, things that don't involve any confrontational situation where uh, self-defense and the need of a weapon might Thank come you. into play. Mr. Logan? Uh, yes, I think we'll have some issues uh, relating to the contract if we, um, you know, if we change classification. So I think we have to look at it. It's a great goal, uh, but right now I'm not sure if we can just jump from where we are now to uh, having non-sworn officers take the position of a sworn officer. Thank you. And yes, how did you know? I don't know, I just, he hadn't talk, called me in a while, so I thought, it must be me. Um, yeah, as long as it makes sense, again, I'm not gonna reorganize the police department because I don't have that expertise and I would hope we have a police, um, a, a police chief that does. I would um, also like to see that uh, you know, when you want, when you need a police officer with a badge that can put somebody in the criminal justice system, that's what you need to come to your door. So I don't think we need to short change. Thank you. Uh, next question, what would be the single most important thing you could do to improve Vallejo's school system? Mr. Sampayan. What the city needs to do is collaborate with the school system. We need to come together to work on infrastructural issues, to research funding. We need to come together to try to bring the most quality education we can to this community for our children. Thank you. We need to have a code of conduct, be, uh, uh, code of conduct, which is very important because when we have dress code, we have the way they talk in the school, their attitude matters, and this will be involved with the family, parent, teacher parent association or the family association involved with the school. Thank you, Mayor Davis. 
<laughs> we can't specifically improve the schools, but we can work with the school district. I've already been doing that. As a matter of fact, I brought the, uh, the uh, superintendent of schools to our city, and she's coming back to give us some idea of what she's doing and what's going on in our schools. I will continue to do that. Thank you. Next question, are you in favor of Indian gambling on Mare Island? Mr. Malgapo. I'm willing to look at any major investor with deep pockets who might want to come to Mare Island who can handle the cost. Just to prepare that 157 acre piece of land, it's going to cost about $8 million to tear down the buildings and dig deep Thank down you. to establish the pier. Mr. McConnell. I've worked for Harris Tahoe in the casino, so I'm not against to gambling per se. When you deal with an Indian casino, however, you have to get all of your rights in writing up front because once you sign on that bottom line, it's all over. That means you've got to negotiate very difficult, very tightly as to what you want. After you sign on it, it's too late to change it, folks. Thank you. Mr. Kershaw, yes? Uh, yeah, I'm very much in favor of it as long as they can prove their financial ability and that the entire thing is uh, properly negotiated on paper before it's commenced. Thank you. 15 seconds. We create for a lot of jobs that we need. 15 seconds for someone who disagrees. Oh, Council Member Shively. <laughs> I do not disagree with the concept of anything that will bring revenue to Vallejo. However, this is something that needs to be looked at. What I do disagree with is the location. There is a much better location at the intersection of I-80 and Highway 37, which is more visible from the freeway, would certainly bring in more spontaneous gamblers. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Mayor Davis, did you disagree? I don't necessarily believe that the casino is best for our community. I think there are a lot of developments that we can put on Mare Island and other places that brings in revenue and not necessarily a casino. We have a lot to offer. We've got the freeway, we've got rail, we've got water, we've got everything Thank going you, for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question. Would you, would you support limiting all employee contracts to two years? Mr. Logan. Needs to be negotiated again. Um, Mr. Da uh, uh, Mayor Davis, sorry. I don't think the length of the contract is as important as the conditions of the contract. I think they have to be tied to what's going on in our finances and we have to have some reopeners in there so that if we end up with a two-year contract and something happens with our finances, we're able to adjust the salaries and benefits to, to meet it. That's what's important. Um, Mr. Sampayan. I truly believe that we need to look at extending or having a minimum of two-year contracts. And I would agree with Ms. Mayor Davis that if something happens and our economic forecast goes south, we have a way of adjusting our contracts so we're not stuck in the hole that we could be in. Okay. Uh, Council Member Hannigan, same question, please. Yeah, I have to agree as well. I'm sorry, I'm not going to fight this one, but it, it, it does have to be negotiated with our employee unions as well. But I also think we need to have an opener and, and be very open about our, our financial situation, um, given the contract that we've put ourselves in place with. So there is some flexibility. I think that's really important. That's not something we've had in the past. Thank you. Okay, the last question, um, which I think everybody should answer. What's your idea of a night out on the town in Vallejo? Mr. Malcolm. Um, <laughs> shall we start with number, Mr. Malpaca? Okay. Well, well. First of all, uh, a really brief time that you're giving us. The uh, I, I view the waterfront as uh, something similar to Pier 39. I like Solano 360 to tie it with Discovery Kingdom, then you become a real tourist attraction. We're not the gateway to anything. We're not the gateway to Napa. We can stand on our own feet. Is this what you do, Mr. Mel? No, it's what's your idea of a night out in Vallejo? A nice dinner, a you know, a glass of wine <laughs> with my wife. With, okay. uh, Mr. McConnell, what's your idea of a night out in Vallejo? Going out with my wife. <laughs> Secondly, uh, going to uh, probably dinner, usually down at the Thai restaurant on Tennessee Street, and then to a 
uh, event like at Myra, where I used to also be a president, or to the symphony, or some social event that people are gathered at and having a good time. Thank now. you. Mr. Kershaw. Um, well, uh, my friend Tara and I like to go to the front room, or Napoli. So don't forget my free pizza for saying this. But, uh, <laughs> any, anyway, uh, after that, we'd like to go to a movie locally in Vallejo. And then if we still have Thank time, you. we take our dogs out Thank and you, walk sir. them on the waterfront. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Council Member Shively, what's your idea of a night out on, in Vallejo? Thank you. Uh, dinner at one of our nice restaurants because everyone who knows me knows that the only reason I have a kitchen is because it came with the house. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, the, going to the Vallejo Symphony or a theatrical production because we have a really great group. Thank you. I want you to continue, but I can't. Uh, Mayor David. Uh, similar to what we did last night, we went to a, a fashion show at Empress Theater and afterwards we went to dinner to be able to go to a play, to a show or something and then go to dinner and go home and you don't have to travel across the bay to do it. That's a night out. Thank you. Mr. Logan. I like going wherever people are. Uh, so last night I had a similar night. I was at the Sister City event, which was great. I then went to uh, a Filipino uh, veterans event, which was great. And then I went to Stefano's, which is a soul food uh, bar and grill, and had a little food, and then Havana Soul after that. So it was great. Lots of people. Thank you. Fun. Council Member Hannigan. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I know. A whippersnapper. <laughs> Well, my ideal night would be to go with my husband on our sailboat for an early afternoon cruise and enjoy a meal in town and then spend some time at the Empress at a show or at Matt Larson's comedy show. I don't know if you've ever been, but they're a lot of fun and it, we could all use a good laugh. <laughs> to share time with my family, doing fun things like going to arts and entertainment like the Empress Theater, dining at some of our fine restaurants that we have here in town, being with friends, seeing smiles on people's faces and enjoying Vallejo for what it is, a beautiful town. Thank you. Uh, I love going out with my wife sometimes, but very rare. But what I love to do mostly is talking with people, conversing with them, have fun, go to movies, that's all. Thank you. Okay, we're finished almost, except for a little, a minute and a half statement from all of you. Each one of you. Would you like to start, Mr. Gapo? A minute and a half to say anything you want. Okay, folks, uh, if, you, if you take nothing away from this forum tonight, remember two things. Uh, and these are good news. One, we exited Chapter 9, thanks to the hard work of our incumbent council. They, they deserve credit. Three and a half years of hard work. Um, from there, our school district, which we've all been telling you, the city and the district are connected, even though we don't have jurisdiction with the school, they're about to exit receivership. This is a golden opportunity. We're at a crossroads, and you need people, and I'll sell myself tonight. You need somebody like me with fresh ideas. I think out of the box. I can bring business and jobs to, to Vallejo. Uh, we need to pass Measure B to, to, to give us a shot in the arm. To, to fix our potholes and do some things that we can't do right at the moment. Our budget is very, uh, it's balanced, but there's no room to improve, no, no room for raises, no room for anything. Should anything happen to uh, revenue, I was telling you, sales tax, property tax, utility tax, and so forth, the, the scale will dip, and then we, we're back to substandard services, and we could be in front of a bankruptcy judge again. We do not want that. We need jobs, jobs, jobs. We need to stop people from leaving our city because our schools are bad. We need to fix our roads. We need to revive Vallejo and uh, fix the waterfront. Again, I connect the waterfront, Solano County 360, Discovery Kingdom, all of our golf courses. We have a ferry system. We have water where there's life. Where there's water, there's thank life. Thank you, sir. And thank you. Mr. McConnell. Yes, thank you all for coming. Thank you for organizing this event. We appreciate it greatly up here. 
thinking and passing Measure B is not thinking outside the box, it's thinking as the box has always been designed in the past. And that's why I want to print, get on City Council and bring a lot of experience, judgment, and education to the table. Um, you name it, I've done it. I've worked everything from picking pears to being the law clerk for the United States Court of Appeals, running my own business, working at the State Personnel Board, fighting combat in Vietnam. I've done it, and with that, I've also counseled thousands of clients over the decades that I've been practicing law. I speak English, I speak bureaucrat, I speak bankruptcy, I speak legalese, uh, and more especially I listen because I've had to listen, learn how to listen due to a hearing impairment for small arms fire while I was in combat. And that those are the skills and the judgments that I'm going to be able to bring to the city council. It's unique. I don't think anyone else has that. And I believe that that contribution will enhance a city council which will can then work together and I can make it work together. I'm trained as an arbitrator, I'm trained as a mediator, I'm trained as a litigator, and you bring all of those skills to a council of this, because what you're trying to do is create policy, not micromanage. And policy means you have to think well the outside the box as to how you're going to structure something even when it does have to be restructured, because occasionally you have to think about restructuring, and that's what the city needs to do today, is restructure with creative thinking. Thank you again for coming, and please vote for me on November 8th, Robert McConnell. Let's save our clapping till the end, please. Well, I don't believe experience is necessary because more and more people who are getting into government for the first time have no experience whatsoever or background in government. They're citizens like you and I who are tired of being given lip service and getting nothing in return. There are people who want to change things, who have decided to go the extra mile and run for public office so they can. There are people who want to get into government so they can listen to other people like them so they can affect the kind of change that people are looking for. I'm running for free. I'm not accepting a penny. No endorsements either. I'm not putting any signs up. I've spent $250 out of my own pocket. I don't even think it's necessary to spend a lot of money on a local campaign. I'm doing it out of my love for Vallejo and the people of Vallejo. Okay, Sam Kershan, F-O-R, VallejoCityCouncil.com. I think we need to invest in a major project to create our own revenue and take advantage of the jobs bill that Congress is gonna pass. We need to build a municipal railroad, and anyone who is involved needs to listen to the gay community and their concerns and embrace them, make them feel like they're part of the community, whether it be the mayor or council person. Thank you. Council Member Shively, can, can you please hold the applause till the end? Thank you. Council Member Shively, you next. Thank you all for coming. And thank you to Citizens for Vallejo for putting this on. And I want to uh, thank candidate Logan because in the first six months that I was in office, the first nasty gram that went to the newspaper was the trouble with Shively is she wants to run the city like a business. And you have heard Mr. Logan repeatedly say the city is a business. So with that, I have the financial expertise, obviously, after many, many years in banking, to address the city as a business. Most of the changes that I have accomplished have been financial. Our city charter has a structurally balanced budget requirement, a general fund reserve policy, and a five-year financial plan, because I advocated for all of those in 2000 when the charter was changed. One of the messages I think you've heard up here today from almost everyone is that we need contracts that are sustainable. We do not have them now. The idea that Measure B is going to bail us out from this is fallacious. We need to address our fiscal problems before we ask for more money from the citizens of Vallejo. Do we need more revenue? Yes. But an increased sales tax is not the answer. It dodges the bullet. And FYI, after the first of the year, 
Sacramento is going to be considering an increase in sales tax. That will put Vallejo at 9.375 if Measure B passes. That is almost 10%. And lastly, I would like to say that Vallejo needs and deserves a full-time mayor. Thank you. And being retired, Thank I can do that. Thank you. Mayor Davis. Thank you for coming out and thank you citizens for Vallejo for this forum. Uh, it's interesting, I've had uh, four years to serve as your mayor. It's been an interesting experience, it's been a tough year. I've appreciated, I've been honored to be your mayor for that period of time. Um, the things that people are talking about up here, it's interesting to me because I've already been doing all of those things that everybody's talking about. Uh, I've spent my time trying to improve collaboration between agencies. I've spent my time trying to consolidate and we consolidated the transit systems in Benicia and Vallejo. I spent my time going to Washington, D.C. to lobby for monies for transportation for our ferry system. I spent my time going to Sacramento lobbying for us to be exempt from uh, budget cuts. I spent my time lobbying the Secretary of Navy. I went back to uh, D.C. on my own dollar to lobby the Secretary of Navy to move Mayor Island along and I also spent my time lobbying people at the Department of Toxic Services in Sacramento to make sure that they worked with Lennar so, to clean up so that we could get some of those no further actions. I've spent my time lobbying the governor trying to get monies to help us with um, um, our law enforcement. I in fact called Governor Brown. He finally did call me back. We had a conversation about how he could help the city in our police efforts and patrolling uh, interstate, I mean uh, Highway 29. I've done all those kinds of things. Measure B, I'm just going to hit that real quick, is something that's one penny on a dollar. It's not a save all, but it's a jump start for us thank to you. build our city. Mr. Logan. I want to thank the organizers of this forum. I want to thank you all for coming out. This is a great opportunity to hear uh, what each council candidate and uh, mayor candidate uh, feels the direction of the city should be. Um, I, I would like to say, I, it, when you look at us all up here, none of us are going to be the savior uh, for the city of Vallejo. We just have to be clear. And it's not going to be an easy journey to get us back on track. What it's going to take is folks to roll up their sleeves, residents, council folks alike, uh, fire union, police union, city staff. We all have to roll up our sleeves. We have to come up with a plan that we all can buy into uh, so that we can make Vallejo as great as, as it needs to be. Again, I think Vallejo can be an all-American city again. I'm the youngest one up here. I plan on being here for a while, uh, and I don't want it to be in the, you know, in the basement. Uh, we can be better than what we are now. That's what I'm gonna push for. That's what I'm gonna fight for. I'm gonna make sure that Vallejo is good for my kids and my grandkids. Um, so I'm really excited about this opportunity. Again, my name is Jonathan Logan. I'm asking for your vote on November 8th. Uh, and just one more thing, you know, uh, we, we have to think outside of the box. We have to think creatively about what the city uh, can be, but we also have to make sure that it's pragmatic. We have to look at the reality. That's the type of leader I am. I'm pragmatic. Uh, I refer to myself as a pragmatic visionary. I like big ideas, but I also want to know how do we actually get there. That's going to be the type of leader I will be if elected to city council, and I humbly ask for your support. Thank you. Councilmember Hennigan. Yeah, thank you. I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. I know you had other choices, but I'm glad you're here. Um, I, I truly believe that actions speak louder than words, and I have a record to, to run on and one that I'm very proud of. I've supported a balanced budget process um, and spending within our means for the last four years and for the five years coming forward in the future, and we'll continue to support that and advocate for that because we can't go back to where we were um, in 2007. I've supported consolidating our bus systems, which is going to reduce the cost to the city of Vallejo, but it also heads us in a direction where we need to go with most duplicated systems within our cities, within our city and cities close to us. I've improved the quality of life in our community through redirecting truck traffic. It may not sound like a big deal, but if you had a big 18-wheeler driving down your street, it's a big deal to you. It's also going to reduce costs for our community. And also with my chronic nuisance ordinance, which is a very important ordinance that holds property owners accountable. I couldn't wait to answer a question about that, but I never got one. 
I've worked with schools, and I'll continue to work with schools on the Vallejo Business and Education Alliance, which works with our three um, higher learning institutions, as well as with our public school system and our business community to improve education in our community. So we are the city that's going to attract those jobs. I've worked on the Career Academy uh, Master Plan Partnership as well. I've reduced crime through the Chronic Nuisance Ordinance. I am going to continue to focus on quality of life, public safety, and the retention and the attraction of jobs. I have a balanced approach to decision making. We have a bright future, and I want to continue continue my work. Vote for me, Aaron Hannigan, for re-election to the City Council. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. This has really been an outstanding showing of a good citizens of Vallejo that really want to know what's going on and who to vote for and what the issues really are. And thank you to these folks who did a wonderful job in putting this together. Again, my name is Bob Sampayan. I believe in our town. I believe in our community. I believe that we are on the cusp of coming back together and becoming the glorious town that we have always been. We are going to show people who have talked about us negatively that Vallejo is the beautiful place that it has always been. As your city council person, I'm going to advocate for some very important things, one being financial stability. We need to look at contracts. We need to look at a five-year budget plan where we're going to keep money ahead, where we're not going to just spend frivolously. We need to look at educational programs for our youth. Those that are not going to go to college, we need to think about trade schools, apprenticeship programs that are going to be available to, available to those youths so that when the economy does swing back the other way, we have a built-in job market for these young people to step right into the process. We need to consider Public safety, where are we going to go with public safety? Can we reorganize? Can we use the people that we have now? Can we civilianize some of our positions? Absolutely we can. And lastly, economic development. We need to start thinking, and I hate to use this term because it's been bandied around, but we need to think outside the box. We need to think about where we are going to go with economic development and the right way to improve our community. Vote for Bob Sampine. Thank you. I thank the organizers of this program, the way everything has been the largest uh, forum I've ever seen since we have been started. This is the biggest so far. I love it. Thank you, for everybody. What I'm going to do is, I have a master plan. My master plan is, one, to stop crime in this city. That is number one. When we can stop crime, we can build our city to the highest limit. And not only that, because I'm well, I, after serving many years in the military, go around everywhere in the world, I know what is called culture and tribe of people. I've been used to a lot of different tribes of all races. I know what it takes to be among people. I know what it takes to be united to new people. And when we are together in one, not if I'm elected as a council member, I'm not going to fight anybody or against anybody. We need to fight for the citizen of this city. Make sure we unite as one, under one voice, not looking for those interest people coming to use their big power against the poor people in the city. No, we need to make sure we fight for the city of Vallejo. Make sure we, we for home closure, we need to stop that. That is number one, that is priority. But when there's nothing done, to that, there'll be a lot of disadvantage to people. One thing I need to do is make sure I build a relationship between the police and the community. Very, very important. Thank you. Okay, we're at the home stretch now. I don't want anyone to get up, but you can give everybody a rounding clap. Okay. And Paul? Well, I would, I would just like to thank everyone for coming out tonight and for this audience. I think this is probably one of the best forums that uh, Vallejo has seen, and we appreciate you all coming out tonight. I think some of the candidates will be around for a few minutes if you have some more questions, you want to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. But again, thank you everybody for participating.